What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 14.2 beta 2 to registered developers about, yep, two weeks after the release of beta 1. And unlike the first beta, this one is also available for the iPhone XR as you see right here and also the iPhone 11. So we don't know exactly why Apple did not support those two devices on the first beta, but now you can go ahead and get beta 2 running on your XR or your iPhone 11. Now, in addition to iOS 14.2 beta 2, Apple also released iPadOS 14.2 beta 2, watchOS 7.1 beta 2, tvOS 14.2 beta 2, and macOS Big Sur beta 9. And of course, all of these updates should be available to public beta testers within the next day or so. All right, so as usual, we're gonna be talking about what's new in this iOS update as far as the new changes, the new features, bugs, bug fixes, the performance, battery life, and of course, talking about what's next for Apple, which is most likely 14.2 beta 3. But let's start things off with the size of this update. So you can see here, it was a surprisingly large update for a second beta. So we got a 1.14 gigabyte update coming from beta 1 to beta 2 on my iPhone 11 Pro here. Now the size will vary, and I did see some that were only like six to 700 megabytes. So of course that size will vary depending on your device and of course the version you're coming from. But let's go ahead and check out the build number for this update. And you can see the build number there is 18B5061E. So we do have an E at the end of the build number there, which does indicate we are still a ways away, of course, from the final release of 14.2. And then scrolling down to the modem firmware, we did also get an update to this. So it was 2.01.01 .01 in beta one, but now it's 2.02. .02. 0.00. So if you were having any type of connectivity issues, those could very well be solved here in beta two. All right, so now let's talk about what's new here in beta two. And the first thing is actually pretty big for a lot of people. And that is that we have new emojis in 14.2 beta two. So we usually get the new emojis in the point two updates. And of course, Apple continues that trend here in beta two of 14.2. So there are about 15, I believe, new emojis here. I could be wrong on that, it could be more, it could be less, but here are some of the new ones that I noticed and there are a few more as well. So we have the old man right there, the pinching fingers, we have the heart right there, a lot of new foods and drinks and things like that as well. And if we just scroll through here and compare, you can see we have the heart right there and then also the lungs. So that's also new right there. You can see on 14.0 here on the left, we do not have that, but on 14.2, we have the lungs and the heart right there. And we also get a ninja emoji right there, which is pretty cool. So I think this will be a pretty popular one of the new emojis here in iOS 14, so pretty neat. So a lot of cool new emojis you can go ahead and look through here on 14.2 beta two. Now, if you guys watched my beta one video, you would know that one of the first things I talked about and mentioned is the music recognition toggle here inside of the control center. So of course, when you tap this, it will listen for music and it will you know, tell you what the music was and you can click on it and view it in Apple Music and things like that. Now, one of my biggest complaints and one of my biggest things I said should change is that there needs to be a timeout for that. And as you can see right there, Apple listened and we now have a timeout of about 15 seconds and then it stops running and stops listening for music because in beta one, I talked about how there was just simply no timeout. It would last forever. And you know, I had it running for like 10 minutes and it still was listening for music. And I was saying how that's you know kind of an issue for battery life and you know can be running in the background forever and you maybe not even know it. So now in beta two, they did add a timeout of about 15 seconds, which is great news. So thank you for listening, Apple. Now, one change that I'm not a fan of here in beta two is that in the control center now, if we go ahead and haptic press on the not playing, like if you haptic press on the music platter there when you have no music playing. As you can see now, we do not get any suggestions for music to play. So up here in beta one, it would show recently played and suggested music or media to watch or listen to. And now as you can see here in beta two, it just simply shows a glyph of an iPhone and nothing else. So I'm not sure if they just reverted back to this because they're testing out something new here or just changing some things. I'm not sure, but that is changed here in beta two. Also down here, this little glyph where it says control other speakers and TVs, that has also changed in beta two. It's a little bit more descriptive and fitting down there. I also noticed that the iPhone name and not playing, like where it would show the music that's playing is now grayed out. So in beta one, it was still white, like as if music were still playing, but now it is grayed out to further indicate that nothing 
is playing. The watch application also got a new icon. So it's now the Series 6 with the solo loop, as you can see there, versus the Series 5 with the regular sport band here on previous versions of iOS 14. Also, if we head into our settings and then go to sounds and haptics, you'll see that under headphone audio, instead of saying reduce loud sounds, it's now headphone safety. And if you tap on that, you actually get a new toggle in here as well for headphone notifications. So it says to protect your hearing, your iPhone will measure headphone audio levels. If you exceed the recommended seven day limit, a notification is sent and volume is turned down. So a pretty neat health related change here in beta 2 and then there are also a few other small ui changes around the os now one thing i forgot to mention in beta 1 is that the volume grabber is actually a little bit easier to grab now than it was in previous versions of ios of course it is a little bit bigger there the knob is a little bit bigger uh, but it is a little bit easier to grab and turn the volume up or down with. Now, unfortunately, when we go to the lock screen, you'll notice that the time still shows the current time on the song. So it doesn't actually show the beginning and the end of the song like it did in previous versions. It'll just show you where you're at in the song. So that's one change that a lot of people aren't too happy about, myself included. I still wish it would show, you know, how much time since the beginning and how much time until the end over here on the right hand side, like it was before. But for now, it looks like Apple is sticking with just simply showing the time. Now I did also notice a couple of bugs here in beta two. So when we go ahead and copy something from one app and then paste it in another, take a look at the bubble that pops up in iOS 14 when you paste something. So take a look at that. I don't know if you guys can tell, but the gray was a little bit off there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this again and screenshot it so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So there, now you should be able to see it pretty clearly. So you can see that the gray and the whites just don't line up. So it's misaligned and that is a new bug here in beta 2. Now one bug that has not happened to me is that some people were having really major bugs with the widget. So they would kind of just be flashing and I have not had this at all. Some people would have blank widgets. Some people just had like flashing widgets. Like I don't know if it was just refreshing fast or just didn't know which image to pick. I'm not sure what was going on with some of these people's widgets, but I've not had any issues with widgets, but I did want to mention it since some did. Now also some people had issues where when they played music, it would actually show the wrong icon here in the bottom right hand corner or wherever you're you know, viewing the music out on the lock screen, for example, as well, it would show the wrong icon. So somebody had a music icon when they were actually playing Pandora music. So that was definitely a bug in beta one. I've not experienced that though. So if you were having that issue, let me know down in a comment below if that has been solved. But overall, there are not a ton of bugs here in iOS 14.2. Of course it is a beta software, but there aren't as many bugs as I originally expected. So anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the performance here in 14.2 beta two. So as far as beta one goes, performance was actually pretty good. Now, of course we did have bugs. We did have issues. Some people had issues with Wi-Fi and connectivity and things like that. And that's expected, you know, apps crashing, things like that. That's expected for any beta but especially at first beta, but I didn't really have too many issues at all as far as performance goes. So everything seemed to run perfectly fine for me on 14.2 beta one. And I've had the same experience here with beta two. And actually, if you go ahead and check out the Geekbench scores, you can see I did also run a Geekbench score here and we got significantly better results. So 1335 on the single core, that's the same as beta one, which is right below it. But take a look at the multi-core. So we got a 3518 versus a 33. 52. So a nice bump up there in the multi-core performance on beta two. And of course those don't tell the full story, but it is always encouraging to see higher Geekbench scores. Now, as far as the battery life goes, I would say that battery life was not as good on beta one as it is in iOS 14 or iOS 14.0.1, but hopefully beta two will fix that. It was not like I had battery drain issues, but I know some people on the iPhone seven and seven plus specifically did have battery drain issues and same goes with performance as well. They had some performance issues. So if you've been using an iPhone seven or seven plus on 14.2 beta, let me know in a comment down below if beta two is any better than beta one. But anyways, going back to the battery life, battery life was just a little bit worse, like I said, than 14 and 14.0.1, but hopefully beta two here does fix the minor decrease I noticed in battery life. And I will let you guys know in a follow-up update coming as well. So now let's talk about what's next for Apple. What's the next software they're going to release? And I believe it's going to be iOS 14.2 beta three, and that will probably come on the week of October 12th. So it seems that we are on a two week cycle. So the week of the 12th would make sense. However, October 13th is the rumored date for Apple to announce the new iPhone. So that makes me think that we may not see a beta on that day or that we'll see 14.1 release that day. 
and then maybe you know ios 14.2 later on in the week so i'm not too sure 14.1 is still a mystery like i said that probably contains information about the new iphone so it would actually make sense to release ios 14.1 on October 13th after the iPhone announcement. So with that being said, there is also the possibility of Apple releasing iOS 14.2 beta 3 on the week of the 5th, if they intend on releasing iOS 14.1, the final release on the week of the 12th, most likely on the 13th. So we will have to wait and see on that. And of course I will keep you guys updated on Twitter, but those are my thoughts on what I think is next for Apple. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for iOS 14.2 beta two, not a ton going on, but we did get those new emojis. We did get the timeout for the Shazam widget right here as well, or the Shazam control center toggle, I should say and a few other UI tweaks around the software. So not a lot, but it is a welcomed update. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss my next iOS update video. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.